Welcome back. Now let's continue trying to see if there's any criteria for convergence for our Taylor series expansions. And we're going to continue doing that with the ratio test. Which as we said, we're just going to take the ratio of, as we say, like to say, um, if we have a series in terms of an index n, then if we take the ratio of the n plus 1 term over the n term and see if uh, and compare this value up, we can see if it converges or di diverges and if there's any criteria for that. So let's continue on. We're going to apply that to our next Taylor series expansion, sine of x is equal to the infinite sum of negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. Now it's important to keep in mind that when we try and take the n plus 1 term, what we're essentially doing is every time we see our index n, we're going to replace it with n plus 1. And then let's just do it out by hand in this case, because if uh, let's just replace uh, n with n plus 1 here. So if we have 2n plus 1, that's going to become... Oops, 2 times n plus 1 plus 1. So we have to distribute out the 2, so we're going to get 2n plus 2 plus 1, which is just 2n plus 3. The reason I really want to do this out by hand is occasionally people just say, okay, let's replace n with n plus 1, and we'll forget to distribute out the 2. It's a common, it's a common stupid mistake. So let's take the Let's define our row. We're going to say that that's the limit of n approaches infinity, the absolute value. And because we're dealing with absolute values, these you don't really need to worry about these negatives to the ends. So our n plus 1 term, which is just going to be x to the 2n plus 3 over 2n plus 3 factorial, divided by uh, our a, a to the n term, but instead of dividing, I'm just going to multiply by the flipped version or the inverse of just x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. This is our n plus 1 term divided by our n term. So let's see if we can simplify this up. Uh, let's just rewrite this and group some of the terms. This is the limit. Oops limit as n approaches infinity of x to the 2n plus 3 over x to the 2n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 factorial over 2n plus 3 factorial. Sorry, this is 3, not an 8. Didn't know how that came out there. But anyways, let's try and simplify this up. Um, we can say that this x to the 2n plus 3, that's just x to the 2n plus 1 times x squared. So if we divide these terms out, we're just going to be left with x squared. So let's just write that in. x squared over... 2n plus 3 factorial, that's just going to be 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 and all the other terms, but we can just simplify that by saying 2n plus 1 factorial. So if we divide these two terms out, we're going to be left with these two remaining terms, 2n plus 3 and 2n plus 2 in the denominator. So now we have our expression. Let's see if we can take the limit as n approaches infinity. And like before, provided x is finite, as n goes to infinity, the denominator is going to approach infinity, which means the entire fraction is going to approach 0, which means that this uh, will converge, since 0 is indeed less than 1, we know that this will converge for all finite values of x. So we'll converge for all x provided they're not infinity. 
Now let's do the same thing with cosine, just to make sure that there's no criteria for convergence there. So we know that cosine of x is just the sum n is equal to 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n over 2n factorial. And we're going to do the same exact thing we did before. So we're going to define rho is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of absolute value. And because we're dealing with absolute values, we can forget about the negative 1 term. So we're going to have our n plus 1 term divided by our n term. And if we distribute out the n plus 1, we're going to get uh, actually 2 n is going to become 2 times n plus 1, or just 2 n plus 2, if we distribute it out. So our n plus 1 term is actually x to the 2 n plus 2 over 2 n plus 2 factorial times, or divided by our n term, which is going to be times 2 n factorial over x to the n, or x to the 2 n. Okay, now let's do the same thing we did before. Let's just rewrite this. We're going to get that this is the limit as n approaches infinity of x to the 2n plus 2 over x to the 2n times 2n factorial over 2n plus 2 factorial. And we can do the same, like, canceling on the top and bottom, and we're going to be left with that rho is equal to the limit n approaches infinity. Uh, if we do out this first term, we can, fact, we can say that x to the 2n plus 2 is just x to the 2n times x squared. So the x to the 2n's will cancel, and we're left with x squared over. We can say that x uh, 2n plus 2 factorial, that's just 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 times the rest of it, which is going to be 2n factorial. So the 2n factorials will cancel, and we're left with 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1. And as we take the limit, the denominator will go to infinity, which means that unless if x is infinite, this whole entire term will go to 0, like just as same as before. Which means that since 0 is less than 1, this series will always converge for any finite number of value of x. So let's just review for a sec. We found that in this video and the last video that the three main Taylor series expansions we've been working with, e to the x, sine x, and cosine x, we found that the Taylor series expansion uh, converges to this function for all finite values of x. There's no conditional criteria for this convergence. Now, this is fairly convenient because we'll find that in the next video that there are some Taylor series that do have like a conditional uh, criteria for converging. So let's examine more Taylor series expansions in the next video.